In our top story tonight, the Ministry of Health is investigating the possibility that some students at a secondary school may have been exposed to a serious respiratory illness. And it is advising the public that health officials are conducting the necessary investigations and have put procedures in place to ensure the situation is well managed. Letters are being given to students to take home to their parents or guardians, explaining the procedures to be followed. In addition, education officials, school administrators and teachers are being advised about the situation. The Ministry of Health will provide an update after the public health team has visited the school tomorrow. Government isn't finished with its retrenchment program. Confirmation of this from Prime Minister Fendel Stewart as he gave an update on the process. Well, next is, uh, is, is not a question that I can answer in terms of giving particular departments, but the, the process is continuing and uh, I would say so far so good we've been uh, getting the 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 results that we want prime minister stewart spoke to the media after emerging from talks with trade union officials and the ncc management at government headquarters yesterday relating to retrenchments at the commission he also made clear that there will be no decrease in the number of workers to be sent home from the ncc which stands at about 200 Mr. Stewart says government must meet its budgetary objectives. What may happen, depending on the tribunal's findings and the, the adjustments that have to be made, persons not now affected may be affected, but certainly the figures will not change. And the General Secretary of the NUPW is optimistic that a resolution to the ongoing NCC saga could be found by this Friday. This as he believes the case of the NCC workers will be brought before the Employment Rights Tribunal by this Friday. Mr. Clark says he's not certain as to who will sit on the tribunal. I cannot remember or find the the names of the individuals that uh, constitute the tribunal. We know for certain that there are nine persons, and I believe that um, there are about three tribunals coming out of those um, nine um, persons who make up the overall complement. But uh, I don't know who would be sitting in this particular um, situation. Several NCC workers who turned up for this morning's meeting were also joined by former drainage division employees at the Dalkeith Road headquarters. Mr. Clark revealed that during this morning's meeting, the NCC workers raised several issues about the terms and conditions of their service, which the union will be discussing with the NCC's management. Well, today what we did, we, as I said, we brought the workers up to date on that meeting, and we heard a number of complaints from the workers, which clearly indicate that um, we have a lot of work to do with the NCC management. And we have a lot of work to do with the terminal benefits that the workers have so far been given. Meantime, NUPW President Walter Maloney believes the meeting chaired by the Prime Minister achieved its objective. I think the, the, the first thing that we needed to do was to correct the wrong. I think that um, this, after, this morning what has happened is that there's an acceptance that there was around, that the process was, was tainted and that we need to go back and correct that. And the only vehicle you can use to correct it is the same Employment Rights Tribunal. BWU Deputy Director of Industrial Relations, Dwayne Paul, is confident the process is moving in the right direction. After careful examination of the, 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 the information, decided to follow the process as we've been seeing. Uh, we've committed to a process and therefore we're going to see it through that the matter will be referred to the Employment Rights Tribunal as a matter of urgency uh, for adjudication. Political analyst Maureen Holder believes the NCC's impasse should go before the Employment Rights Tribunal. She says the Employment Rights Act was created to handle situations like this. Now, the sections that really speaks to the uh, establishment of a tribunal are under part three 
And if you go further down and scanning through the Employment Rights Bill, you see Part 8, which speaks the dispute settlement procedure. And I think this is where we're at. And certainly we would expect that the tribunal should allow for the parties involved in the dispute to generally explore all the avenues open to them to clarifying the issues and finding agreeable solutions without resorting to any kind of industrial action. And, and largely speaking, it should avert any possible industrial action, especially uh, where there's clarity on the issues and all parties agree. Well, the opposition Barbados Labour Party is contending that Prime Minister Fendel Stewart has yet again failed to resolve a matter that is within his province so to do. In a statement, opposition leader Mia Motley said Barbadians expected that the Prime Minister would have rejected the way in which the layoffs were done by the NCC. She says the NCC is not an independent republic but a statutory board accountable to the people through the board, the minister and the cabinet which the Prime Minister leads. Ms Motley says even though the Employment Rights Tribunal was appointed last year, no regulations have been published in accordance with the Act and there, and there are no prescribed forms or procedures to guide the filings of the complaints. She's therefore arguing that the tribunal isn't ready and that the workers will continue to suffer financially and emotionally. Meanwhile, a member of the legal fraternity says the Employment Rights Tribunal is legal and can function. According to the source, the tribunal is duly constituted by virtue of the Act. He says the fact that regulations are being worked on still does not impact the work of the decision-making body. The source also noted that the decisions of the tribunal will be binding. He added that the decision can only be appealed on points of law. Barbadians are paying less for liquefied petroleum gas from today. That's according to the Ministry of Energy. The price of the 100-pound cylinder will move from $179.64 to $174.51. 25-pound cylinders will now cost $48.73, down from $50.01. The 22-pound cylinder will now cost $43.04, down from $44.17. And the 20-pound cylinder, which was $40.16, will now cost $39.13. These changes represent decreases of $5.13, $1.28, $1.13, and $1.03, respectively. With government subventions being cut in half, the head of the Family Planning Association says financing will be a main challenge in the future. Executive Director George Griffith is, however, optimistic that the association will be able to raise enough funds within the coming year. At the time, he was speaking to the media on the sidelines of the agency's 60th anniversary service at the St. Mary's Anglican Church. We have lost 50% of our subvention from the government over the last four and a half to five years, and the organization has been addressing this. In fact, we have seen that our ability to, to raise more money, a higher percentage of our budget. In fact, the government's contribution is now 44%, and we are raising 43% from our own efforts. And we believe, based on what we're seeing this year, that come next year at the same time, we should be reporting that we are raising more than the government. And we think that is the way it should be. Mr. Griffith maintains that none of its services will be compromised because of the cuts. And the rector of the St. Mary's Anglican Church, the Reverend Dr. Von Watson, is appealing to the Barbados Family Planning Association to do more to promote its work publicly. Delivering the sermon at that anniversary service, Reverend Watson lamented the fact that little mention is made about the association's positive work. You must follow the example of Paul. And when you have opportunity particularly in public, to use them and use them well. For there is another side to the Barbadian life, and it is a side which we are very good at insider information. 
And Barbados now has 25 new special education teachers trained at postgraduate level. And this will complement the island's push to attain the international requirement set for universal access at the early childhood level. Education Minister Ronald Jones admits that while Barbados will miss the first deadline of 2015, due to economic and other circumstances, it will not compromise the island's efforts. He says, thanks to the work of the private sector, particularly the Maria Holder Memorial Trust, starting in October, Barbados will eventually have at least six new nursery schools. I can assure you that within the next two to three years, working along with the private sector who are also providers of early childhood education and, and, and development, all the other stakeholders that Barbados will be able to offer to every three-year-old some form of education, childhood care, and childhood development. And it will be possibly the first country within our English-speaking region to do that. The minister was speaking to the graduates of the first master's level certificate in early childhood education. The training was provided for the primary school teachers by the Boston-based Wheelock College. President Jackie Jenkins Scott, in wishing the teachers well, says they are making a major contribution to the island. Personality and the spirit of the teacher. At the end of the day, for those little children, as the minister said, to know they are loved and respected and you are here to help them reach their full potential is the greatest asset for your school and for this great country.